<laughs> Where's this one? Point it out on the map for this me. This is Field G. This looks like a beautiful gateway. It does. And look at that hedge. hedge line. God, that's gorgeous. Where's our woodland then? Uh, so probably we're about there somewhere, aren't we? Oh, I can hear a little trickling stream. Oh God, I love little streams like this. This is a scrubby bit in between the wood and the pasture. Can you imagine this bit here? Centre of the community. Maybe a few little homes scattered about. We're having a think about, well, how does it feel? Could you really live here? So, Mr Ollie. <laughs> Your thoughts? We'll take it. <laughs> We're at a hilltop and it's some land that's been bought by a group of people. <laughs> Lots of people call it the land. <laughs> it was my idea to call it Land Matters because land does matter. We decided to become a community cooperative and we want to live on it and make it beautiful. I trained as a nurse and then I did a degree in religious studies. My life sort of turned around really when I went to Newbury, to the road protest at Newbury and just totally fell in love with living on the earth. Uh, it's a return to the land but like you know with the wisdom of like now of the modern age and you know just lots of different cultures coming together you know it's not like going back to the past it's about creating something new that's a lot more simple and a lot more sensitive to the environment and in which you get to spend more time with nature with the weather and the elements and plants and trees because it's, uh, it's just really nourishing and, and fulfilling and real you know and the project that we're doing here is using permaculture tools and ethics and ideas you know in order to sort of organize the space and it's a really exciting process I'm Patrick Whitefield teacher of permaculture and also consultant this project also asked me to help with the design process and uh, that's what we're doing this weekend. So we would like to come up with a rough overall design which includes water and pond sites, access, hedges, hay barn. And then once you've got a clear list of what you're trying to do and you match that no, to the site conditions fun. then you can come up with a design. In a phrase permaculture is applied ecology. It's a matter of looking at how natural ecosystems work and then modelling our own activities as closely as possible on natural ecosystems in order to get the same uh, high yield, low need for input and ecological sustainability that you get in ecosystems. Just a little bit to the left of that ash tree, but it would be dwellings on that side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then here, village Sorry. green. It's also the aspect of making sure that everything fits together so that one part of the system supports another part of the system, so there's the maximum cooperation in the landscape and within people and between people in the landscape. The communal building would be to the right and the vegetable garden would be on, beyond that so that grey water and root water from the communal building is handy for the main zone 2 garden. Permaculture as a name it seems to sort of stay on the fringes and it's sort of the, the extreme ecological approach which makes all the others look quite respectable by default. You know, I mean, organics used to be way out on the fringe. Well, now organics has become more, more mainstream. And I think there's plenty of scope for permaculture, both in the cities and in the country. And some people say uh, that, oh, we all ought to concentrate on the cities because that's where most people live and that's where the big problems are. But I think that's, that's making it an all or nothing, an either or. And actually, there's a need for both because, you know, the land is where our food comes from. There's an awful lot of it. Now, if you look at Britain, most of the actual area is countryside. Are we just going to turn our back on the countryside? No, of course not. So I wouldn't say that we have cut and dried solutions at the moment. And I think one of the great values of this project is that the experience you gain over the next 
few years, the next few decades or whatever, is going to be really valuable towards some sort of model of how the countryside could be more sustainable, more inhabited in a real way, rather than just being a home for commuters as it is at the moment. The, the problem with planning is that the situation as it is now, the majority of people who want to erect some kind of a dwelling in a, in, right in the open countryside where there isn't anything at the moment, the majority of those people just want to live there because it's a beautiful place and then commute to work, to schools, to shops, to, to friends, you know, it's just really sort of a dormitory situation and the planners at the moment, with good reason, assume that anyone who wants to live out in the countryside is of that kind. And I think it's up, actually up to people who want to live in the countryside to demonstrate that you know, there are people who genuinely want to live in the land and rehabilitate it, actually be part of it in a constructive and a productive way. This site is particularly good, I think, because you've got a combination of areas of high ecological value, like the woodland and the hedgerows and so forth, but you've got areas which have little ecological value as they are now, so there's plenty of scope for doing things with them. It is extremely difficult to make a living off the land, mainly because of globalisation. In the longer term, I mean, who knows how things are going to change. So I think in designing a site like this, it's necessary to keep both things in mind at the same time. Uh, the present situation and the future situation in which, in which growing your own food may become much more important. So the next question, I think, is how much space is needed for the open space in the middle, the village green in, and, and the dome? I'm very impressed with the, the quality of the people in the group, the degree of cooperation and the, the way people work together. Yeah, I mean, the area that Ollie just demarcated sounds pretty good to me. And is there any way of working out easily now, maybe off the map or something, what that area of that is? Yeah. That's, well, maybe more like that. Just, just under 60 metres. So I think it's a very mature group and, and with a lot of dedication and uh, considerable sense of unity. I really want us to discuss and make some decisions about our planning strategy. What kind of planning application we might be putting in, what kind of approach we might have to the authorities. Yeah, I'd quite like to do a little bit on planning at least, because I feel with everyone moving up here in the next few weeks, I think maybe we should concentrate on the things that are going to be really important. We need a, some kind of a management plan which is agreed before we move on, that was the agreement. I have got the uh, the beginnings of a management plan. I mean, I suppose I'd like something a bit like the management, you know, but more in a permaculture design format. Like Earth Care, People Care, Fair Shares, maybe as titles. I mean, that's just off the top of my head, or just like showing how we're intending to run, you know, what does that mean? What does it mean to people out there that don't understand what permaculture is about? Like, to be able to give them a document that kind of like sums up our approach. So we might need to actually include some explanations of permaculture principles in it. I mean, I'm really excited from doing this, of the idea of, you know, having a lovely display mm. and saying to people, come up and look at what we're doing. From years ago, I've been wanting to live close to the land. Land is the very basis for how we need to live. Like, you know, it's where our food comes from, it's where our air is made, it's where the soil is, the soil and the air and the water are the very basics and, and we're so disconnected from that and, and it's because we're disconnected that we are able to destroy it so thoroughly. Western industrial capitalism is creating problems that, unless we change them pretty quickly, are going to be absolutely catastrophic. We need to change and this is a part of creating that change. My sort of personal aim here is to be working in the woods as much as possible. It's the, the woodland and the forest that I find inspiring to, to be in, to work with, to learn about. And after, after a bit of time here, I still, you know, I'm only just beginning to scratch the surface of what's going on in there. could spend so much more time in there to learn how it is and how it lives and how I can be a constructive part of that without damaging it, but yet also living from it. And this is 
the area to clear to regenerate the hazel which is pretty overstood and to let in light um, just to regenerate this this area the oak trees that are dotted around this area um, will hopefully be our building material for the barn there will be things that people go oh no look that's happened and that's <laughs> That's what's going to happen when you work in the woods. That's yeah. what the wind is doing every day. Yeah. That's what is is yeah. part of the process of working yeah. in the woods. It can't be done with like velvet gloves. So have you picked trees on the basis of the fact that the trees around them will benefit from their removal? The criteria is that there's enough length and straightness to make a beam out of it. Secondly, uh, yes, that it's um, in a place that's overcrowded. I mean, we can go through now and I can mm. say for each one mm. if people want to do that. Yeah. Well, for some of them yeah. anyway, yeah, it's well, just we'll interesting. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, yeah. No, totally. Well, no, I want to see what. Oh, if you were a tree and you saw us walking around, this is like the executioner's walk. Oh, no. It? It's not execution. I know, but it's okay. <laughs> it's really, no, it's, it's really fine, important about how just, you imagine I've your just realised what we're doing and, um, and, and we're agreeing, aren't we? We give away like the jury. But I, no, I don't think we are at all. I think I'm part of the wood working with it. I'm not judging the wood and deciding to kill certain trees. But it's so <laughs> crucial about whether you, yes, whether you really come at this work, yeah, yeah, right, yeah. being like, oh God, you know, every tree that we can save is a result. And like, yeah. I have to stop Ollie from killing the trees. No, no, it's not that. I know. No. Say we've got I ten. I know no one's saying that, but that's definitely we've got the undercurrent, isn't ten. it? And yeah, and that little holly. And the holly. Well, yeah. we're doing a bit of a sort of one-off. We're not. We're not going to be building many barns. We're, we're yeah, doing a big. Good. We're taking a resort as an investment, mm. so it's sort of. Yeah. It will be evened out by other sorts of work. What's important is that we respect and treat well the world that's around us. We need to live more environmentally, with lower resource use. What we actually need is more time, more space, community, fulfilling work, and, you know, the things that actually make life joyful. And we don't need to be exploiting the world in the way that we are to live like that, to live happier lives. Basically, are talking about what you think is going on and what you would like to see going on? I'd like to do what was up front, you know, and put in an application, but at the same time, I'd actually like to just do what works. At the end of the day, I just really want to see this project work. Well, we're not doing anything wrong, we're not in breach of anything, until we've actually submitted a planning application and had a negative response. Once they say, no, you can't do that, and we're still carrying on doing it, then we're in breach of something. I would like some kind of situation where when we're settled, when we've got our homes built and we're all feeling a little bit more cosy, to put in an application and to be totally, totally open with the neighbours. I think it's completely irrelevant at the moment whether we approach the planners or not. So I'd like to propose that we don't need to discuss that because we have, we can't. either way, That's it, either way we need to draw up a planning application. Agenda 21. Agenda for the 21st century. Um, this was written at the Rio oh. Summit of 1992 and signed by over 150 governments. Oh. Our government committed itself to this agenda. Chapter 7 of Agenda 21, entitled Promoting Sustainable Human Settlements, says the following. Access to land resources is an essential component of sustainable low-impact lifestyles. The objective is to provide access to land for all households through environmentally sound planning. Wow! I didn't know that the term low impact was in Agenda 21. Yeah. That's really interesting. My name's Brains. I've been involved with Land Matters since the beginning. Before I was living in a bender on another piece of land that was a bit of farmer's land and there was limitations with that and we wanted to get our own land so we could do this project. Last one. A bender. Bender is a very old traditional low impact living structure and you use these to make the framework and you put them in the ground and bend them together weave them all together and you can make a little cocoon type shape or like a rib cage shape with the bendy poles the oldest ones would have been made of hazel poles and covered with animal skins it's been fairly basic used by the sort of rural nomadic peasants for many hundreds of years um, as they moved around the country doing 
different agricultural tasks in different places. And I think even back in something like the census of 1800, there were something like 11,000 Bender dwellers registered. They've not changed a lot over the years, apart from now they're covered in tarpaulins generally rather than animal skins and they've usually got windows and doors. Hazel's particularly good because it's very bendy and it grows in this particular shape in these long straight poles and you can cut some from the tree and it will grow some more to replace it. Living in a bender is, is low impact in a number of ways. The structure itself is made primarily from either sustainably harvested wood, mainly outland matters from our own woodlands, um, and it's made from things that have been reclaimed from recycling centres. I like to feel close to the elements and close to the nature. When it's stormy, when it's windy, your walls shake and you know you're in a storm. When you live in a house, you can wake up in the morning and not realise it's even happened. It's, I think it's important to live close to the elements. It gives you a deeper respect for nature, it gives you a deeper sense of interconnectedness with nature. In the times that we're living in, I think that's an important thing. I think a lot more people could do with making that reconnection. When you consider the ecological crisis at hand, um, making that reconnection is an important first step in understanding how to change things for the better. Land matters is important to me because I see it as being an example of an alternative way of doing things. And that's not to say that I think this is the only way and I think everyone should live like this. This is just one alternative to the destructive mainstream lifestyle. And to be able to make this a working example to encourage other people if they want to try it as well to show that this is this is a viable alternative way of living which isn't environmentally destructive which isn't socially destructive I'm uh, trying to build a home build a bender the idea is to make as much of it as possible that reclaimed recycled materials other people's waste Day one, I felt pretty daunted. I didn't know where to begin. I felt like I'd taken on too much. Never done anything quite like it before. I haven't really used a chisel since I was about 14. <laughs> yeah, it's not much like a bender just yet. Splendor. Feels like you're in there then. Still needs sorting out inside though. Fitting the carpet, the uh, last bit before we fully move in. Hooray! To the splendour. To the splendour. We are building a barn. A bit of rainwater collection, proper storage area. Cut them down in March, from our woods, pulled them out with horses and a tractor and made 
a load of square beams and now we've got to make them all fit together. The saying I learned how to do it would probably be an exaggeration. <laughs> I read a book and I uh, made some tables and uh, sometime in a few months and loads of people will come for a bit of a party and by sheer dint of muscular effort we'll raise it from the ground. I like the amazing use of electrical power out on the hill. Thanks to our stunning solar system. There's our bank of batteries with the cable going out to the panels out there on the south side of the hedge. Comes into the regulator which uh, measures the amount coming in and sort of controls it and measures the batteries. And then the batteries are connected to the inverter and from the inverter goes out to our normal plug system. Yeah, so the enforcement office is coming, but I kind of always expected this at some point. You know, for me, it's part of the process that we're sort of engaging with the planning system and uh, hopefully helping to change it so that it does encompass low impact sustainable settlements. So I feel all right, actually. I just feel a bit tired because we all got up really early this morning. The enforcement officer is coming in about 50 minutes. <laughs> Everything is completely calm. He lied. Visibly. Okay, well, let's start with um, with here. Okay. Uh, what would you call this? Is it mean, HQ or is this? Yeah, this? it's like. I mean, we just got a communal space really. Because in a planning sense, it's, I wouldn't pass this as um, a classic development, but it certainly is a change for use. You can't class development if it, if it can if you can move it. So that's why I'm asking about these questions. Can yeah. you easily pick it up, move yeah. it along, and take it with yeah. you? Uh, it's, it's, it's not development in a classical yeah. sense, but a change of use has certainly occurred. Yeah. Because where it once was didn't support occupation, it now does. So the yeah. land has been changed. Okay. So this is the reason why that I've been involved first and foremost. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, obviously, Debbie's have been involved because of the the long the long term plans. Yeah. Right. right. I think we've done. Okay. I well, think Debbie's just finishing up. Yeah. Oh. Means it means imminent enforcement. No, 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 no. He said, there's, you know, there's nothing he needs to like enforce against. Right. Certainly not at this time. I asked about getting in a planning application and stuff. Oh yeah. She, she did admit that this was like quite an exceptional project and it's going to be a lot of paperwork and qu quite a complicated uh, planning application yeah. that got put in. We had an appointment with Debbie Crowther, who's a planning officer, and with Jamie Staples, who's the enforcement officer. They were both very helpful and very friendly, and gave us a lot of useful information and advice. Sort of a bit off the record, but he thought we had a, a good case in a lot of ways. He thought we, sound, we had a lot of information to sort of help back up our project. He says he sees a lot of people come in with crazy ideas, who he thinks he knows before they leave the building that they probably haven't got a chance. So Jamie said we need to get a draft planning application in ASAP. Basically because this isn't supposed to be development land, we need to supply material considerations as to why we should get permission. We should show that we're going to have a low impact on the landscape. We need maps of land to show work already done and work planned. We need six copies of everything that we do um, and the application will be at least £265 and it could be a lot more. Well, we're feverishly working away, trying to get our planning application in. We've got about four or five computers on the go. Yeah, we've got an office in town, thank goodness. And we're getting together this huge and weighty document, which at the moment is sort of looks a bit like that over there on the wall. <laughs> I'm glad that there's a planning law because I wouldn't want the countryside being developed willy nilly without thought. And I hope they do give like time to consider our application properly. You know, I think there should be exceptions to the planning policies that we have. I feel like with this planning issue at the moment we're just at the bottom of a big mountain really and although we're, we're doing tons and tons of work um, around the clock to get this in on time there's a good chance they'll just look at it and turn us down and hope that we'll go away but well, of course we won't go away right right it's here hooray it's done hey. it's ready. <laughs> here we go off to the printers Ha, 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 ha.
And let's <laughs> not even be a pill. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> The last frame, the last of the cross frames. Um, we're just trying to fit the rafters with the braces for it. So it's just the last stage of fitting. Should be done today. We've got these two last braces to go in here. They go in like that. And a collar that joins the two rafters together. And uh, that'll be it on the major woodwork. And then it's back to the beginning again and checking it out basically. But the raising should be only a few weeks off. Planning okay, so we've refused. got our whole application back. Planning permission refused. Yeah. Proposal comprises development in the countryside outside any development boundary or recognised settlement where there are no local services, facilities, employment opportunities and public transport where new development is strictly controlled. Are we like making employment opportunities? Anyway. The site is unsuitable for the purposes of residential accommodation because it's an unsustainable location divorced from these facilities and the development will therefore foster the need to travel by private vehicles. Two, the change of use from agricultural land to a mixed use that includes residential purposes by reason of the residential structures and associated residential paraphernalia is detrimental to the character and appearance of the rural landscape located within the area of great landscape value. The establishment of the residential use will create a potential need for future replacement residential structures which will be detrimental to the character of the rural landscape and area of great landscape value. Number three, the road network leading to the site is inadequate by virtue of the width and alignment of the roads to cater for the additional traffic flows that arise from the development. Four, the local planning authority is not satisfied that the agricultural need claimed for this development is proven and the development constitutes development in the countryside outside a town and village. Given the nature of the existing enterprises carried out on the land, it is considered that there is no overriding functional need for the residential occupation of the land. This is crazy. The proposal itself constitutes and will encourage undesirable intensification of sporadic development in the countryside. Yeah. I know, I didn't understand. What's that? I mean... I think we're undesirable, means, basically. It means other people might do it. Yeah, basically. They don't like it, it might encourage other people to do it. Yeah. Set a precedent. Yeah. If you are aggrieved by the decision of your local planning authority to refuse permission oh, yeah, to propose development or to grant its subject to conditions, then you can appeal to the Secretary of State for the Environment. Oh, right. yes! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, who, who's asked me to come here? No one. I went for the regional, the regional newspaper spotlight. Wow. And we're doing a piece um, because some of the villagers are upset that um, we might be building huge houses. The piece itself will just be, uh, you know, a bog standard, one minute thirty, maybe two minutes tops report on Spotlight, the regional news programme tonight. The, the people in the village I've just spoken to are worried about your long-term plans. They're worried that, you know, they're going to see lots of houses, you know, big structures going up in the, in these fields. Well, and you know, as being part of a community, then they would. Well, why don't you just say this then, and then they can? Uh, it's very difficult in like a th in, in like a five second like snapshot, you know, for us to kind of get across like the big picture of what we're doing here. You know, it's like I just find it really difficult to believe that that's going to happen. We're trying to explore sustainability and how we can live more simply on the earth and with each other. We're trying to take responsibility. Yeah, well, we're well. trying to take responsibility for a whole ecological footprint here. Can't you just Energy, housing, that? employment, fuel, water was our waste, you know, and it's just yeah, it's our concern that you wouldn't actually that wasn't the picture it would be painted. It's more like well, Drama, I know, I know, public yeah, lottery funding, know, funding people with beards. I know what your opinion. <laughs> you know what I, mean? I know what your opinion of the BBC must be, but I happen to take my job very sure, seriously, sure. probably as seriously as you take what you're doing here. Yeah. And I would never put out a piece that okay, wasn't cool. balanced. Uh, yeah. And that, you know, I take my job seriously just as you take sure. yours seriously. And you know, I I think it would be sad to put out the piece that I may. It looks like yeah. I'm going to have to without your point of view in it. Um, I suppose effectively we want to set up a. Um, a low impact permaculture uh, holding consisting of um, low impact residences, uh, horticulture, agriculture, um, education, um, forestry, combining a variety of ways for people to make a living off the land and to reduce their ecological footprint. That was the intent behind it. I spoke to Jamie Staples 
uh -huh. who's the enforcement officer, because in the paper it says that they're going to recommend enforcement action. Mm. So I spoke to him, you know, and I said I was a bit surprised about that. And why is that? Because I didn't think they would. The last time he came and looked, he was happy with the stuff, and I didn't feel like anything had particularly changed to make it in any negative way. Um, but he said, basically, yeah, he's writing a report that will go to the committee recommending enforcement action. They will almost certainly take it. Right. Basically, we've put in our application, it's been turned down. Yeah. And we're still here. Yeah. That's the issue. Yeah. You know, we shouldn't be here. And we are. But if they've given the six months to appeal, what I mean, what's the relationship well, between things? Well, it didn't. Yeah, in, yeah we got the six months to appeal, and it didn't say specifically that we had to leave in that time. Yeah. And I brought this up with Debbie, and she said, "Well, it's implied." I said, "Well, it doesn't say anywhere." She said, "Well, I'll put it in writing if you want." I said, "No, Tom." <laughs> <laughs> what is the enforcement? What well, the first stage of enforcement <laughs> is that they fine you, for, but you have to leave. If you don't leave, then you're fined. Yeah. If you still don't leave then you face a prison sentence. Yeah. And if you're still there after all that, then I think they can, you know, come in with bulldozers. Yeah. Just emotionally hard when it actually comes to the crunch. Yeah, because really we just want a garden. Yeah, exactly. We just That's want to make irony. our land beautiful. And we I'd have to deal with all this bureaucracy. <laughs> We might be on the telly. You might see a picture of you on the telly. Yes, I should have on the telly. Devon has been served with an enforcement notice requiring them to take down their tented settlement near Totnes. Land Matters cooperatives say they will appeal the notice, but if it's upheld, it could ultimately make the conservation work for which they've been given lottery funding impossible. This is what's causing the controversy. Land Matters Cooperative bought this land in the small hamlet of Allerley three years ago. Now eight people live here permanently in a way they say is sympathetic to the land and beneficial to the wider community. We're trying to make sustainability a way of life whilst also um, conserving the land in a beneficial way and improving the biodiversity of the land and also making it a wider resource. Um, for the wider community. Land Matters have already run several courses on permaculture and traditional rural methods here. The people living in the tiny hamlet below, worried by a potential increase in traffic and the effect of the group's permanent presence here, objected to their retrospective planning permission for these 15 low-lying structures. Today, South Ham's District Council issued an enforcement notice against Land Matters Cooperative. I, I firmly believe that the right decision has been taken these people will clearly have an opportunity to appeal. That's when any serious decision will be made. Um, so I think it's really, I think it was very good to draw a line in the sand at this stage. Land Matters Cooperatives say they'll appeal the decision and in the meantime they'll continue to demonstrate their commitment to the land and try to put the fears of residents at rest. Sounds of the side. I suppose I'm quite concerned really quite worried from the point of view of planning law and the laws of the land. I don't think we stand a lot of chance of success what we're trying to achieve here. We're trying to do something which there isn't legislation for really. I think it's a bit of a David and Goliath style battle. I know we've got a lot of public support but I do wonder what our chances are. I feel like there's so much to do physically on the land, so much work and just doing that would take up all our time. And now on top of that, we've got to be putting in a planning appeal and looking into going to a public inquiry. And it's going to take a lot of time and energy. And I don't know how much we've got to spare. No, I didn't sleep well last night. Um, I often don't at the moment. There's a lot to think about. It's hard to turn your brain off. I think about all the various options and outcomes about what might happen if ultimately we fail and I think about the locals that are upset by our presence here and that saddens me I don't like to think I'm doing stuff which upsets other people so we've been refused permission but that wasn't totally unexpected really it's no big surprise We've had loads of press up here. We've had about four different newspapers and the BBC, and most of them turning up unexpectedly. 
So, you know, I keep bumping into people who have heard about us now. In some respects, it's not a bad thing, you know, it's quite a good thing because we're kind of getting out there and, you know, I'm quite excited about the fact that lots of people are hearing all about benders and yurts and, you know, that we're doing this and that this is possible. I don't know, there's some dialogue going on with, with people in the village, you know, different people, you know, we have fairly good relationships with some people. You know, and they are generally supportive of what we're trying to do here, but they just don't think that we should live here. You know, but the thing is, unless we live here, the project's not possible. We want to do this project wherever we would have put ourselves. The people around us would have reacted with fear. There's all that going on. Never mind the logistics of trying to keep it all together and trying to make it all happen. The planning application sort of created this document um, which describes our vision and so that's kind of there now you know and now we need to make that vision real and I mean it's just so vast and you know everything just takes longer up here you know you can't just turn a tap and get your water and make yourself a cup of tea you have to walk down the hill across three fields and it takes you about 40 minutes to get like 15 litres of water so everything's slow going. We had a really great Beltane celebration, we had a maypole and lots of people came and you know people come up here and they just love it. Loads of kids running around and really enjoying themselves. I mean apart from the neighbours I think most people that have been up here are, are quite excited and quite positive about the project. when we're raising the frame probably pretty much everybody's going to be doing yeah. something and we want to be mega clear that everybody really knows what is expected of them and if anyone's not clear the time to say is before you start um, okay so the barn it's got four of these trusses they're all pretty much the same the main thing that everybody's going to be doing is helping raise these individual frames one at a time okay one two three go Yeah, it looks all right. It's got enough, it's straight. It's great. Everyone happy? Yeah. One, two, three, go. It's all going well. There's some really tricky bits to do tomorrow. But yeah, I mean the raising is just a scary bit in a way. That's that's we know what we're doing now, and the last one really went up quick. I'm looking forward to getting in the hammock in there with the cold beer. So we appealed against the refusal of our planning application. At the moment, we've got to get together our proof of evidence, which is basically what I'm going to say about the project in answer to the reasons of refusal that have been given. One of the main points uh, for refusal that the local planning authority, the LPA, have made is that uh, due to the fact that we're in the countryside um, we are unsustainable um, which obviously 
is quite interesting, seeing as we're trying to be super sustainable. So as you can see, I'm surrounded with papers. <laughs> Um, you know, some of the people in the co-op have uh, written lots of stuff. We've got lots and lots of information, lots and lots of ideas, lots and lots of thoughts. And we now need to condense it down to the vital pieces of information that we want to get across. And it's quite difficult. Yesterday I lost it completely and was in tears and was storming around the site in a big old strop about it all really not happy with the state of where we're at with so little time to go and so unprepared and so much to do it's, it's a very unstable future you know it's important but it's not the end of the world but sometimes it's it's hard not to take it all too seriously when I stand back and look at the bigger picture it's all fine you know even if I have to leave here, it doesn't matter. I'll just go and live sustainably in a lone pack way somewhere else. So it's going to be dealt with by public inquiry. Basically, it's a bit like a courts room. We have the local planning authority on one side and we have land matters on the other side. And then we have the Bristol inspectorate, uh, the planning inspectorate, and he has to decide whether to uphold the decision of the local planning authority. We've got some witnesses, we've got a solicitor. There's so many things that you can refer to. Then. So many, yeah. I mean, that, I mean, when I, before I started writing the proof, I was a bit like, you know, well, I'm not sure how well this is gonna mm. go and, you know, but since I've started reading all the policies mm. that the government's got, you know, on we've got to address climate change, mm. we've got to be mm. sustainable, we've got to like mm. cut back on our resource use. And it's like, mm. we are actually doing yeah. loads of the things that the government says Absolutely. is important. Yeah. Although they say we're unsustainable because of that, well, there's A, the fact that we don't need a lot of those facilities, yeah. B, that when we do need them, we're not using as much transport. But then there's also C, the fact that in a wider understanding of sustainability, i.e. the sustainability checklists, regional and local, and the ecological footprint, mm. you know, we actually score really highly. So there's no way that they can actually say that we're unsustainable. You know, what we're doing, even though it sort of might seem like it goes against the policy of development in the open countryside, is still actually in line with what that policy is kind of I mean, being judged that's against. Absolutely, yeah, we have to do it. So, yeah. and so this is an isolated settlement in the countryside, you know, and there are policies saying you shouldn't have them. Um, and if you stop there, then they've got quite a strong cases, and if you go beyond that, as of course we will. This isn't a, a case where there's a glaring weakness in our case, or we've got something to hide or anything like that. It's a, it's, it's, um, I mean, it's, it's a complex issue, but it's a, in a way it's a very straightforward issue. You know, this is what the policy says. It's designed to do something different from what we're doing. It doesn't address it. Yeah. Other bits of guidance do address it, um, and the reasons behind the existing policy supports what we're doing. Yeah. The, the first big step, obviously, is to get a get a permission. Yeah. With a condition on. If you've got a condition on that says 12 or 10 or whatever. Yeah. That's the first big step. So this is our biggest bender. Right. So, you know, if we wanted a condition on size, it would be probably the right. size of this one. Do you know what that is? Um, I think she's been trying to work it out. The, the main oh, circle in the middle is six metres, then. So, yeah, so that's right. six metres by six metres. And then this little bit off here is, I guessed it was maybe about three by two, and then mm -hmm. this is about two by one. I just want to have the support of the group affirmed. Just do, like, a little sort of ritual around that. And we're going to do some... Uh, walking with awareness through the woods to Robin's Wildwood camp. So yeah, my original intention for being down here was that I wanted to sort of feel um, that everybody was supporting what I'd written and did feel committed to actualising the story that I was telling. I don't know how I'm going to be on Tuesday. I don't know how it's going to be. You know, I've prepared myself as best as I can and I still feel like I could do with an extra six months, but I haven't got an extra six months, so, you know, this is where I'm at. You hold the bowl in your left hand, which represents the female and the male, which represents that. And the joining of them is the union of the two energies, and then you're sort of in ceremony.
and I welcome in the powers of the north, of earth, and give thanks to the food that nourishes us and sustains us. I ask that you help me to stay grounded and fully in my body. My intention for this circle, for this pipe smoking and for the inquiry is that what we do is for the benefit of all beings, that we're all in the circle of life together and that includes the neighbours and the planners and us as well and all the beings that are on this land and the beings in the rest of the world. I ask for the prayers and the powers that are, have been called on today to be with you, for you to be fully conscious of that at every time you speak. In the bag there um, is something which I consider to be a good omen for this <laughs> appeal. And um, before you close the circle, I'd like to like, have a look and see, get out what's in the bag. Wow. 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 Today. Where did you find them? I was digging a hole to improve the grey water filter system. <laughs> wow. It just felt like a really good omen from the land. Thank you very much. Feels really great. I can feel myself getting this big solid grounded root going and that's what I really need to hold on to. I think that's my challenge for this inquiry is just to stay grounded and in my body and in my truth and if I can do that then I can do it. Yeah, so tomorrow is the public inquiry. It's going to be on for three days. And I really thought that I'd got all my stuff sorted in my files. Um, at midnight last night, I was still reading through it all and I managed to spill a whole mug of chocolates all over my paperwork and all over loads of important letters. My head's beginning to swim and that's really not the space that I wanted to be in right now. But really, we'll see how the thing emerges. Um over the first couple of days. We won't get to the condition session until the final day, probably. Phosphorus homeopathy for nerves. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought we'd go uh, Simon, Colin, yourself, Andy, and then Rue, if that's... It starts at 10, I take it? It starts at 10, yeah. Really, it depends whether we manage to get across to the inspector the core ideals and ethics behind what we're doing and whether he thinks that that's important or not. We've got my proof, we've got Andy Goldring, the director of the Permaculture Association's proof. We've got Simon Fairley, who's our low impact right. policy expert. Colin Jones's proof, he's a transport expert. Yeah. Oh, yes. Andy Goldring, Colin Jones. Hi, Andy. Yeah, I mean, it really, you know, it depends on what the inspector's like. Our solicitor thinks our case is fairly good. Why, first of all, if you can round it up, why was this application rejected? Well, basically, the national planning policy and local planning policy is that you shouldn't have developments like this that are outside villages and settlements. The whole concept of planning in this country is that we decide which settlements we're going to have development in, try and concentrate it near facilities and services, and avoid development in the open countryside. We're hopeful that, that people understand that with climate change we've got a new reality. Do you have any sympathy with the residents? Because I guess they must feel that this might, having something like this next to them, might have an effect on the property that value that sort of thing. No, well we understand that they're concerned and we've said they're welcome to come up at any time and to talk to us, to talk about what we're doing, to talk about our aims. We want to work with the council so that the council has policies to allow careful, sustainable development of the countryside and to encourage people to live responsible lives in the countryside looking after it. We can't have that with the current planning system that makes local housing completely out of the reach of ordinary people. Star. Star. 
Thank you. David Stevens, who's our solicitor at the beginning, said really it's a balancing act between material considerations and any harm being done. And, you know, if that's the case, then really we should be given permission. Mr Fairley was the first to give evidence at a public inquiry in which the Land Matters community is appealing against South Ham's council enforcement notice, which would have forced them to leave the land and clear away the homes they have built there. Under threat, one of the homes of the settlement. Oh. They claim to be pioneers of a new sustainable way of living mm. in an experimental eco-village on farmland in South Devon. But occupants of the 11 Mongolian-style yurts who commute to their real jobs in battered, environmentally unfriendly <laughs> vehicles are hypocrites <laughs> who have created an eyesore. Yeah. Oh, oh village! <laughs> Yeah, I suppose my big fear was that when I actually sat there and was being cross-examined, that I wouldn't know what to say, that I wouldn't have anything to say, that I'd just be in a state of abject fear, like a rabbit in the headlights, and I'd just be going... <laughs> But actually that fear, you know, turned out to be unfounded and I, you know, opened my mouth and there was words that came out. Uh, the inspectors came and looked around the site. Things that is important is obviously the welcome. They make clear their, their design and management plan, it's about interpretation of the site. And their rules, so they're saying, you know, they respect the way the site is used, please do so as well. So mm -hmm. it's a, I think just the way that they're putting themselves across is, is worth Pointing out. Like I could have like infused about everything like permaculturally and what everything was, but I kind of felt that I should just let him see what's going on without describing everything in detail. It's good for him to look because it's not just about being told what's happening, it's about seeing it for yourself, isn't it? Seeing how beautiful everything is here. Mm. How lovely our homes are, how beautiful our gardens are. Yeah, and we want to live because it's so beautiful. Yeah. And they say we can't. Some people say we shouldn't and they want us to go away. We have this system um, approved by um, Health and Safety. So it composts into a, a totally contained unit. Right, okay, great. Okay, eight metres by five and a half. By five and a half. Maximum five and a half yeah. because you know that takes up. Yeah. So we can knock off our. We say by five, eight okay. by five, by two point two. Yeah. <laughs> there's nothing else that I need you to take me to, unless there's something else that you think I might have missed. I don't so, think so. No. Yeah. I think that's okay. great. Fine. In that case, thank you all very much indeed. Okay. Thank, thank you. you very thank much. You. Uh, the inspector said at the end of the inquiry that we'd get our results within a month. I felt like we were getting permission while we were even in the inquiry. You know, I felt like like I was on a wave, that I was part of something, that like us getting permission wasn't like a point, like a line in time, but it was like this whole stretch of stuff going on that like was moving towards us being able to, you know, get on with it. Today may be the day that we hear. We'll be down there getting the post as soon as it arrives. And, you know, if it's a negative result, then that's a shame, but we'll carry on. Life carries on and we'll carry on what we're doing. I feel that what we're trying to do up here is really important. And it's too important to let those things stop me or stop us. You know, I think that trying to reduce our personal carbon emissions to a level which is going to stabilise the environment is the most important thing that anyone can be doing right now at this time in history and that's what we're trying to do. Mail's due in about 8.30 which is probably quite soon. We were told that we'd find out by the 20th which was Monday which was two days ago. So basically we can't find out other than it'll be in the post. Okay, but it's still worth checking the mail tomorrow. Great. All right, thanks. All right. So yeah, I'm feeling a little bit nervous. I'm not sure it's going to come now. 
And really, Hello. Hello. I think we've got permission off the earth <laughs> already. Cheers. No, no. I'm going to have a look at the planning inspector's website. Yeah, it'd just be nice to know now, wouldn't it? <laughs> it's been a long, drawn-out process. Uh. Okay, we've got um, an email. It says congratulations on it. So presumably it's reasonably good news. But we haven't opened it yet. So I'm going to open it now. <laughs> Is that all it says? That's all it says. <laughs> Congratulations. Some of both of them, quick. Hi, David. Did you want to hear? Yeah, well, we, I think you heard before us, we've been speaking to the inspector and they've been saying we can't tell you yet because the... No, we haven't got anything yet. Great. Okay. Okay. Okay, we can. Three years. A Lambda Alley Lane Alley Cornwall. The summary of decision. The appeal is allowed, the enforcement notice is corrected and quashed, and planning permission is granted in the terms set out below in the formal decision. I'm also so satisfied that the evidence before me demonstrates clearly that in order to practice permaculture properly and successfully on the scale envisaged in this case, a substantial and continuous residential presence is essential. Yes! I conclude that the advancements of permaculture and sustainable ways of living facilitated by this project have sufficient potential value to outweigh the limited harm to other interests of acknowledged importance. Accordingly, I find justification in this case for a departure from relevant local and national policy sufficient to grant planning permission. It's quite emotional finding out. Absolute victory, really. It, it was always a bit of a David and Goliath kind of battle, really, and um, the chances of winning anything at all were actually quite slim right from the beginning. So, yeah, three years, eight dwellings, great, fantastic. It's a big weight lifted, really. And it's still sinking in. Yeah, it is. An yeah. eco-friendly settlement near Totnes has been given permission to stay where it is. The Land Matters community built a number of benders and yurts without planning permission, but the controversy is now ended for the time being. Amy Cole reports. It's a momentous day for the Land Matters community in Alalee. Today, residents have opened the official acknowledgement from Southampton's District Council that their small settlement can stay put for the next three years. Their vendors and yurts, erected without planning permission, have been the subject of two years wrangling with the council. But following a recent three-day inquiry by the planning inspectorate, the community doesn't have to pull down the structures yet. It's quite a stressful yes. situation to be in, not knowing how long we're going to be able to stay here. And the fact that we know now that we're safe for at least another three years, uh, yeah, it gives us a lot more surety in moving forward with the project. This is um, a lamp here. She runs on um, plant oil. And I just feel like she's showing the way. You know, she's carrying this light in her hands and it's like going, come over here. You know, like the future could be great. You know, this could be a great opportunity. You know, we're in, a, in difficult times, but things could improve. You know, we could like create great communities, you know, that are abundant and comfortable and beautiful and where people have good quality lives. I suppose you've just got to believe, believe that it's oh. possible. Oh. 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 
I try to live a life of simplicity. The people and the land matters. It's rich and full of beauty. The people and the land matters. I connect to earth loving family. The people and the land matters. I dance and sing amongst the trees. The people and the land matters. I'm here to co create with spirit and with earth, bringing forth my dreams, bringing them to birth. I'm here to co create with spirit and with earth, bringing forth my dreams, bringing them to birth. I take the earth as a lover, I take the earth as a lover.